If there is one aero company whose designs didn't get the opportunities they deserved, it's Martin Baker. The company was founded in 1934 by engineer James Martin and pilot Captain Valentine Val Baker. A tiny concern compared to other British aviation giants of the time, Martin Baker gained some attention when they fielded their first designs. Amongst these was a proposed fighter for overseas service with the RAF, the Martin Baker MB2, which first flew in 1938. Though the MB2 was not ordered, the competency of the design was enough for the Air Ministry to closely look at a new fighter that Martin Baker were in the process of creating, the MB3. In May 1939, the Ministry issued specification F-18-39 expressly to Martin Baker for the development of the MB-3. This called for the new fighter to have an armament of four 20mm cannons and a top speed of 400 miles per hour at 15,000 feet. This was quite a challenge. Bear in mind that in the summer of 1939, before the start of World War II, the Spitfire Mark I was barely in service and the Hawker Hurricane was the primary fighter of the Royal Air Force. Both of these had a fraction of the firepower and much lower performance than what the Air Ministry wanted from the MB-3, and all from a company that had never actually won a military contract. However, in June 1939, three MB-3 prototypes were ordered, with the expectation that the first would be delivered by mid-December and the others by February 1940. If this timeline sounds somewhat optimistic, well it was especially considering what happened. For starters, and as a wiser man than me puts it, war were declared in September, and Martin Baker found themselves, like every other aviation company in Britain, with more work on their hands than they could handle. The second factor was that the specification had called for the MB3 to use the Rolls-Royce Griffin engine, which didn't actually exist itself at the time, the first prototype being completed in November 1939. The Ministry still wanted their MB3s, however, and told Martin Baker to build them with Napier Sabre engines instead, which at least if they weren't actually in service, were a bit further along in their development cycle at the time. Needless to say, the engine change meant that the whole design had to be reworked, and with the war raging and other production priorities, work slowed to a crawl. In late 1941, Martin Baker was informed that no order would ever be placed for the MB3, but with the construction work on the prototype well advanced, it was thought worthwhile to complete and test the aircraft. Though the slow development had basically doomed the MB3, the time had allowed Martin to continue tweaking the design in the light of combat experience. Ultimately, the MB3 prototype was completed in August 1942. In appearance, with its cockpit set quite far back, it looked somewhat like a early war design, like the French D-520 or a Russian MiG-1. But the MB-3 was a thoroughly modern design. The aircraft was constructed in what was the typical Martin Baker fashion of previous designs, with the fuselage being formed of a rounded steel tube arrangement. However, instead of a fabric covering as in the MB-2, the MB-3 had a complete stressed aluminium skin, except for the rudder. The wing spar was built of laminated steel, which gave it tremendous strength. The Sabre II engine that was fitted produced 2,020 horsepower and drove a three-bladed 14-foot diameter propeller. Additionally, the aircraft had been built with a multitude of access panels and points, again another Martin Baker trademark. But what really set the MB3 apart was its armament. Six 20mm cannon, each with 200 rounds, this arguably made the aircraft the most powerfully armed in the world at that time. In September of 1942, the MB3 was sent for flight tests at RAF Wing in Buckinghamshire. This was a small airfield and had limited safe areas around it where a pilot in trouble could put down. James Martin objected to its use, but the Ministry insisted, and flight testing began on August 31st with Captain Baker at the controls. The first few days went well, with the MB3 showing great characteristics, being fast and extremely manoeuvrable. A top speed of 418 miles per hour at 20,000 feet was recorded, 
and at sea level the MB3 achieved 372 miles per hour. The aircraft ceiling was 35,000 feet and range estimated to be about 420 miles. Then, as the MB3 conducted its 10th flight on September 12th, disaster struck. Just after takeoff, with the aircraft at only about 100 feet, the engine seized up. This was a problem that the Napier Sabre would become notorious for, and it would take several more years of development to resolve, all of which did nothing to help Captain Baker. Trying to put the aircraft down in a small field, he clipped an obstruction, the plane cartwheeled, struck the ground and exploded. Captain Val Baker was killed instantly. James Martin, witnessing the death of his closest friend in a plane he had built, fell to the ground sobbing. The death of Baker, killed flying an aircraft that wasn't wanted, would seem utterly pointless, except it led to two further advances. Although the Air Ministry had already stated that they had no interest in ordering the MB3, work had continued not just on the first prototype, but also on the second. Martin probably set about redeveloping the design and produced the MB5 fighter, possibly the best fighter aircraft in World War II not to be built, and which we are subject for my next video. Additionally, Martin would throw himself into developing ways for pilots in stricken aircraft to escape safely. He had been experimenting with ideas since the 1930s, but the death of his friend gave him the motivation to develop the first Martin Baker ejection seat which was first tested successfully in 1946. Now Martin Baker are the foremost producers of ejection seats in the world, and at the time of this video going live, have saved the lives of 7,641 pilots.